Hi, Martin here. Today I want to talk to you about a hydraulic cooling fan on your 01 through 04 Jeep Grand Cherokees with a 4.7 liter. They started doing this to give the vehicle the heavy duty tow capacity rating. So they needed this extra cooling power and they came up with that fan to do the job. Uh, a lot of people are very unfamiliar with that. Uh, the fact that your power steering pump is driving the cooling fan. Now your ECM or PCM is monitoring four different factors. Your engine temperature, transmission and battery temperature, and your AC system pressure. And it looks at those things and when it sees something that is, okay we're getting a little warm here, well it ramps up that cooling fan. And um, you know that's that's pretty cool I think. Now the only part that you can even change out on that whole fan is this solenoid right here. And you can't even get that from Mopar, Chrysler, anybody. You used to be able to. You're going to have to buy it used. The whole s cooling fan system is unserviceable. There's no part that you can take off and swap out with another one. Uh, the, the unit is built as a unit. It's completely balanced. The fan, the motor, the whole thing. So if something breaks on it, you're just going to have to go buy yourself a used one. Or you can buy a brand new, the entire assembly from Chrysler and you're looking at over $800, probably close to a thousand. But I just want to show you some of the, how, the, how it works, how to change this out, and a small mod you can make to bump up the RPM if you so to desire. Let's get started. Okay, I got another hydraulic cooling fan here. This is my old radiator that I replaced some time ago. Now, I'll show you how to change out this solenoid and give you a kind of a close-up shot so you get an idea of what this all looks like. All right, here we got your connector. Now, there is a locking tab over here. These can be difficult to remove because what happens over time, uh, dirt and everything will get down inside this connector in here on the back side of the locking tab. And you'll go to press it and it will not come off because there's dirt not allowing you to press in the tab. So what I've had to do before is I got a small pick like this and by getting in back here like this and that dirt will fall through this connector and you'll be able to clean that out. Push on the locking tab and pull on the connector. It comes right off. Now there isn't a lot of room in here to get you know a wrench in there. I got a T40 and when I use this was a security bit but it works just fine so using a quarter inch drive now you'll be surprised how tight this bolt can be so get ready to really apply a lot of pressure. Oh yeah this is uh, no exception here. And by the way, these are movable even when the bolt is tight. Now, if this is on your vehicle, you are going to get oil start running out of here. It's not a real fast stream or anything. So if you got another one ready, like that one right there, you may want to apply a small bit of oil on the o-ring not to tear it up.
Okay, right there I can feel it bottoming out. I mean, it's it's tight, but as you can see, look at that. I can actually move this, no problem. So just give it a little bit more. There we go. That's good. Reinstall your connector. One of the things I want to show you about these fans. They are balanced as a unit. The motor and the fan are a unit. You cannot change out the uh, fan. If you break one of these blades, you need to change out this entire thing as a unit. Now, if you notice, you see those ball bearings right in there? There's some larger ones right there, and there's some tiny ones right in there as well. Right in there. These are part of the balancing process. So if you look at a different one, it may not have as many as those right there, like the one that's in my vehicle right now. So this one just happened to be more out of balance, and they had to use more ball bearings to balance it properly. All right, now one of the mods I was talking about you can do to this solenoid right here is right here at the very end there's an adjustment screw there and what that's doing is changing the pressure of how much fluid is going to flow through that pump and it's not much of an adjustment you're going to do it's going to make a huge difference but there is a downside you can only turn this in one whole turn and that's all it's going to allow you to do if you do that this thing is going to go into hyper mode. It is going to be spinning 1600 RPM at idle and in excess of 2500 RPM at around 3000 RPM on your engine. So it is moving. And the downside is you're going to watch your gas mileage go down. Literally. I saw I did it and on my overhead display that displays the gas mileage I could literally watch the tenths of a uh, mile per gallon go down as I was driving within 40 miles I lost like four or five tenths so over a course of time that's going to add up to quite a bit um, so if you're going to do this go half a turn in and that's all and that will actually nearly double the RPM of what it's spinning right now. Okay, using a straight blade screwdriver, and you want one that fits in there nicely, because you don't want to strip this out. And he's got these small divots here that are holding this in place right here. So it's like a preset thing. Okay, we're gonna turn it clockwise. And the first time you ever do this, it is kind of stubborn there it goes right there half a turn in all right what I got here is a laser digital tachometer you can pick these up on Amazon, very inexpensive. Works really well, very accurate. And we're going to use this on the fan and determine what the RPM is of the fan. Is it within normal operating RPM? And do we see an increase in RPM? Right here you can see that where I put the reflective tape on one of the blades and you want to put that vertically on the blade. Do not go across the blade or with the with this the way it spins all right with the vehicle raised and supported properly I can get underneath here and there you can see now we're turning 277 rpm I just started the motor up it's cold and a few minutes later up to 285. Now if you do this be very careful you can see that I'm very close to the harmonic balancer and you got the serpentine belt and the fan. So keep that in mind. 
All right, with the AC on, the RPMs come up, but the ambient temperature is very low. The after a few minutes, it came up to normal operating temperature, and you can see the RPM has increased, and then it did go up to 480 RPM at 192 degrees. All right, those scenes you just saw, it's a very cool day. The demands on the AC are very minimal. Now, the scenes I'm gonna show you right now, I shot months ago. It was 100 plus degrees. I had just put this modified solenoid in the one that I turned up half a turn and these are the results I got then right at 450 rpm I'm gonna go kick the AC on see what that does have it I hope you found that helpful and informative if you did I appreciate the thumbs up and if you never subscribed to me before hit that subscribe button down there and that little bell symbol right next to it and that way you get notifications of any future uploads all right and I have some Amazon links down below please check that out as well and we'll talk to you later